Welcome back to our roguelite tutorial series. In this episode, we're diving into our very first mechanic, player movement. This is the foundation of any game, and it's where we'll start bringing our game world to life. Before we jump into the code, let's discuss how movement works in games. At its core, movement is about detecting player input, like pressing a key, and translating that input into motion on the screen. In technical terms, we're modifying the player's position based on input and frame time to create a smooth, responsive movement. Here's the theory. Think of your player character as an object in the game world. That object has a position, which is represented by coordinates. When you press a key or move a joystick, we calculate the direction the player wants to move and adjust these coordinates accordingly. But here's the catch. We want our movement to be consistent across all devices, whether they're running 30 frames per second or 120 frames per second. That's why we multiply the movement by the time elapsed since the last frame, also known as delta time. This ensures smooth motion no matter the hardware. Now let's talk about input. Unity offers two ways to handle player input, the old input manager and the new input system. In this series, we're using the new input system, and here's why. The new input system lets you easily map multiple input devices from keyboards and gamepads to touchscreens. It uses input maps, which means you can define input actions like move or jump once and reuse them across your entire game. If you want to expand your game later, like adding multiplayer or custom controls, the new input system is built for that. In short, the new input system is more modern, modular, and future-proof. That's why it's the perfect choice for our roguelike game. Now that we understand the theory, let's jump into Unity and implement player movement. First, we'll need to install the new input system if it isn't already installed. If you're using Unity 6 like me, this will come installed out of the box. If you're using an older version, you might need to go to the package manager, search for input system, and install it. Once it's installed, Unity will prompt you to restart and enable the new input system. Click yes to enable it. Since I'm using Unity 6, I already have an input action asset created for me. So I'm going to delete it for the sake of this video so we can learn how to create our own. Next, we'll create an input action to define our controls. Right click in the project window and go to create and then select input actions. Name it something like player input. Double click the asset to open the input actions editor. Add a new action called player and an action called move. Set the action type to value and the control type to vector two. This will allow us to capture two dimensional input for movement. Now we combine the move action to the keyboard. Click the little plus icon and then select 2D vector composite and assign WASD and arrow keys. Now that we have our control set up, let's add a generic sprite to the scene to represent our player. Right click in the hierarchy and select the 2D game object. Then select sprite and finally capsule. Let's give our sprite a new name, player. Now that we have our player in the scene, we'll need to add some components to our player. Let's add a rigid body 2D to our player because we'll be using physics to move our player in the world. On the rigid body 2D, we'll also need to set the body type to kinematic. This is going to allow us to move our player programmatically without the player falling off the screen due to gravity. With the input action set up and our player set up in the scene, let's write the script to handle movement. Create a new folder called scripts by right clicking in the project view and creating a new folder. Double click the folder to open it. Inside the folder, we're going to create a new C-sharp script called player movement and attach it to our player object. Once the script is open, the first thing you'll notice at the top of the script is our using directives. By default, Unity Engine is included for us, 
This using directive provides us access to Unity's core functionality, such as components, physics, and rendering. We will need to add a directive in order for us to get the input from the input system. The directive we will add is using Unity Engine system. This allows us to capture input in a modern, modular way, supporting multiple devices like keyboards, controllers, and touch. You'll also see that the player movement class has already been created for us. This class inherits from mono behavior. This means it can be attached to game objects in Unity as a script component. Unity uses mono behavior as a base class for scripts to interact with game objects and handle behaviors. Before we begin coding, let's remove the start and update functions that are automatically added to the class. We won't need them in this one. Next, we'll define a public float variable for our speed and initialize it to five. This represents the movement speed of the player. Making speed public lets you easily adjust it in the Unity inspector without editing the code. This flexibility is great for tweaking gameplay. If you're a more experienced developer, feel free to serialize a private speed variable. But for now, I'm going to leave the field public to help keep the course more beginner friendly. Next, we'll define some additional variables to help us capture and store our movement input for later use, as well as get a reference to our rigid body so we can use it to move once we capture the player input. We'll create a movement input variable that will store the player's movement input as a vector 2, which represents a 2D direction with an X and a Y axis. Then we'll create a variable called RB2D to store a reference to the rigid body 2D component that we added to our player in the scene earlier. This component is used for physics-based movement. Separating input from the physics logic makes the code modular and easy to debug or extend. Next, we'll add the awake method, which is called automatically by Unity when the script instance is initialized to retrieve and store a reference to the rigid body component attached to the same game object. The rigid body 2D is essential for physics-based movement and using get component ensures we can interact with the correct component. This avoids manually linking the components in the inspector. Next, we'll create an onMove method to handle when the move action gets triggered by the player input in the input actions asset. Whenever the player provides input, this method is called. This function will handle our player's movement input and store the input movement for later use in our vector2 variable that we created. In order to get the movement input from the input system, we have to pass in the callback context into our function. This context will give us the values of our player's input. We will store the value returned from calling context.readValue into our movement input variable. Separating input handling from the physics keeps the code modular. Now that we have our player input, we can use that to move our character. We will do so by adding the fixed update method to our class. The fixed update method is a Unity lifecycle method called at fixed intervals. It's ideal for handling physics updates. This function will calculate the player's new position based on the player's input direction, how fast the player should move, and the time since the last physics update, which will help ensure that we have frame rate independent movement. Then we will move our player using the move position function in the rigid by 2D. This function will move our player from its current position to the newly calculated position. Using fixed update ensures consistent and smooth physics-based movement, even on devices with varying frame rates. This code is designed to separate input handling from movement physics. The onMove method processes player input and stores it, while the fixed update method handles consistent physics-based movement using a rigid body 2D. This approach ensures modularity and clarity. Input logic and physics calculations are independent of each other. Using the new input system also future-proofs our game, making it easier to expand and support multiple input devices. With the script finished, let's go back to Unity and drag and drop the movement script onto the player if you didn't do so in the previous step. Next, we'll add the player input component to our player object and link the input actions asset. Then we'll set the behavior to invoke Unity events. Then we can expand the events and then expand player to see our actions that we have available to this input mapping. Let's assign the onMove method in our player movement script to the move action. Now that we have everything set up, let's test it. 
go ahead and press play and then try to move around. You should be able to move up, down, left, right, and diagonally, and your speed should remain consistent no matter which direction you move. And there you have it, basic player movement implemented using Unity's new input system. This is the first step in building our roguelike game, and it lays the groundwork for everything to come. In the next episode, we'll start working on the core gameplay loop by implementing dungeon exits and level transitions. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss it.